All right, guys, welcome to the recap of the Pro Trading Strategy by Urban Forex. This is more of the advanced course um, as well as a small recap. So uh, a very good morning to everyone. Um, we have quite a bit of people from all around that I'm seeing, uh, people from Malaysia, London, UK, uh, Australia, Manila, Cape Town, so all around, all around the world. And it's good to see new faces as well. Um, if I'm going to record this uh, meeting just in case for those of you who are still just coming in or getting in late. Um, we currently have 57 people in here right now. And I really appreciate uh, all the support you guys have given to the strategy and uh, Urban Forex. Now, um, this is going to be a recap. It's going to be approximately an hour long. We're going to go over the basics. We're going to go over uh, some questions that people had and uh, also um, any any concerns towards the end. Uh, you know, uh, we will leave some time for that so we can go through some stuff. So let's get started here. Okay, now some general news before we begin. Uh, we did uh, uh, actually did hear about uh, the earthquake out. Um, towards Indonesia, so uh, our condolences from uh, me and our team for anybody who might be affected by that, whether it's friends, families, or any relatives that are already there. And we really hope that everyone's safe. Uh, secondly, um, uh, one of our uh, uh, staff members has done a really good job of creating an exhaustion candle alert uh, for MT4. So, which means whenever there's an exhaustion candle, you will you will get alerted. So you guys can get that from uh, the blogs uh, on our on our site. That's urbanforex.ning.com. Uh, under blogs, you'll find exhaustion candle alert. Additionally, since we do trade correlation, we're trading more than uh, you know seven to eight pairs at a time. There's also an expert advisor, which is pretty much a robot to open your trades, all eight of them at the same time, and. Uh, uh, or, and close them at the same time too. So there's a video explanation for that as well. And I think uh, the current version is uh, version 4 for that. So uh, very thanks to, uh, big thanks to Roy for that. Um, also those of you who are on Mac, you know, we also now have a solution for you guys how to get uh, MT4 up and running on a Mac. So that's also a good progress. Now let's get started here. Let's open up our charts. How many guys are already familiar with this strategy? Um, I'm going to make this uh, this current webinar quite interactive because I, I see a lot of names that I recall, and um, but I see the other half uh, start. I'm still brand new, so I'm going to make this very interactive. I'm going to call out people and I'm going to ask questions and um, so on and so forth. Okay, so. Um, Again, yes, so how many people have uh, traded this strategy before? How many have gone through the trainings, gone through the videos? Okay. Okay, Leah, quite, I know you are a member of Forex Watchers, so you are in detail. Um, you, okay. Traded lightly, gone through the webinar once. Okay, we have a no. We have some new new people here. Joe. Okay. All right, watch on website and newbie Tony Khan says not traded but been through a webinar. Uh, I have along with other methods. Okay, from the recorded webinar. Okay, okay. So so we have a, a mixed amount of uh, people in here. Some people who have traded, some people who are uh, uh, who've seen it, some people who've just learned it but haven't traded it yet. Um, Okay, for those of you who have traded it, what is your experience with it so far? How have you guys been doing? Yes, uh, Mihaly, I, I, I realize uh, that's you, so that, that's fine. Okay. Made 30 plus, 30 pips plus on the first trade. Okay, it's nice. Good, good. Okay, so let's, let's go through... Um, is the sound still uh, bad for everybody? I have tr it's okay for me. No, it's fine. Okay, I think the sounds are fine. So if anybody who has any sound issues, please uh, log out and log back in. Okay. 
Um, Brian, welcome to the room from uh, New Zealand. Pretty hard with the erratic market in the vein, but your teaching is definitely helping. Thank you. Okay, I've had some wins and some losses. Okay, okay. So let's go through everything now. Now, for those of you who are new, let's go through a little short uh, recap of what the strategy is about, how to trade it, and so on and so forth. We're going to spend a good 10-15 minutes doing that, and then we will get into some of the more advanced level uh, courses. Now, we are currently looking at, for example, Euro USD. Okay, and what we look for is things called exhaustion candles. Now. For those of you who do not know what an exhaustion candle is, it is just a word I give to candles that are um, pin bars or uh, hammers, inverted hammers, stuff like this, where you have a long tail and a body on one end. Okay. Now let me put in another arrow right here. Okay. Um, just to confirm, if uh, if my screen stops moving or if you see it cut off anywhere, just let me know. I will get that fixed for you guys. Or if my audio starts lagging, also let me know. I, I will do uh, whatever I can immediately. Okay. And uh, so these exhaustions, basically what they are, are basically trend reversal patterns and also trend continuation patterns. We're going to get into trend continuation a little bit later. But right now, all we're going to go for is the basics. A reversal pattern when you have a trend for example this if you look at the immediate trend here the market's coming down you see uh, you see the little trend here it's coming down it makes an exhaustion it a very big tail comes out it means the market tries to go down but there's way too much pressure pushes it back up that's the reason why we have the small body and this big tail consider it like a rocket if you put your arrow on top of the body it's like a firework okay this just tells you which direction the market wants to go. So once you see something like that, you get an idea of the market is trying to reverse. You know, it's a reversal uh, indication. Okay, once this happens, if it does bounce off of a support and resistance line, uh, in this case, this yellow line that we see here, then we know at the opening of the next candle, we can go ahead and buy and we can ride it until the next pivot line. Now, it's not as easy as I'm showing it right now to write it to the next pivot line. I will explain pivot lines a little bit more in detail, but right now let's just get uh, the exhaustions out of the way and understand what an exhaustion really is. So let's show you some more examples. Let's uh, go further down. Okay. Okay. This right here is also considered an exhaustion, but not too clear because take a look at the size of the previous three, four, five candles. And then look at the size of this exhaustion. Does it really stick out? Probably not, right? Because an exhaustion should be intimidating to the other candles and say, look at me, I'm better than you guys. I'm bigger, I'm, I'm, I have a big tail also, you know? So those are the ones that we need to look out for. They need to be pretty much bigger than the uh, previous candles. Now, for example, let's take a look at this one. These exhaustions right here are all reversal patterns here because of the way the last few candles look and how this exhaustion formed with the nice size and everything telling us the market wants to reverse. Okay, let me show you some more here. Okay, also an exhaustion here. Oh, sorry. Okay, so you get the idea now. This is just a candle that has a, uh, a large tail and a smaller body. The body should always be smaller than the tail, okay? If the body is equal to the tail, it's false. It's called a false exhaustion. Let's take a look at this one. See how big this tail is and look at the size of the body. Small compared to the tail size, okay? But the last few candles that have way too much pressure, which makes this exhaustion not as strong as it should be, okay? Take a look at this one. This is also an exhaustion, but the last few candles are way too strong, which is the reason why you see a slow movement rather than an immediate takeoff. Okay, so these are some of the things that you want to look for in exhaustion. Now, when using an exhaustion, you need to use pivot points. Okay, and what pivot points basically are, are these lines that you see on my screen which um, for those of you who do not have the pivot point indicator and want to get it, 
when you go on to our website which is urbanforex.ning.com just go on to forums and when you go on to forums you will see the pro trading strategy and right below the video is the indicator file you can just download it and if you do not know how to install an indicator there is also a video tutorial uh, right there to see how you can install uh, the indicator okay now moving on um, there we go now these pivot points are support and resistance lines um, now you might be wondering okay we have white lines we have yellow lines we have blue line also there's all these words on it s1 r1 p what does that all that mean doesn't matter just leave that aside okay just treat them as lines treat them nothing but lines and they're just there to stop you okay just look at it that way it'll be simple it'll be easy to comprehend and it'll be much uh you it'll be much more um, relaxing to look at it that way these pivot lines, if you download that indicator and you install it onto your MetaTrader, these indicators will uh, automatically plot on your charts. Now, I am using uh, FX Pro uh, demo account, which means that the, the server time on FX Pro might be different from the server time on your MT4, which can also mean your pivot points might be slightly off. So, I personally use FX Pro, that is my recommendation. Um, I will have demo account links on our website to uh, get the uh, FX Pro uh, demos from us, and which will be also can be monitored by us, which is quite, quite good because we can help you guys out when we see your trades. So, that's an option. Now, going, getting back to the pivot points. Now, when you see pivot points, always consider three days worth of data. Okay, for example, let's say, for example, this is today. Okay, that's one day this is two days this is yesterday these white lines are period separators which means it's we're on the one hour chart right now and then these white dotted lines that come down are just separating the days so this is one day this is another day and this is the day before that so always look at three days worth of data now why do I say that is because the what we're taught to uh, use pivot points is only by referring to them on the current day but that's not usually true um, support and resistance likes to repeat itself especially if it's a strong price point from the past what that means is take a look the market on this per particular day it went up came down came all the way down here and then it stopped and it reversed it never came down to the support what's the reason why it stopped here if you look at the day before and you actually use that line you can see that the market touches it exactly to the pinpoint and then turns around. Market goes back up. It does not go all the way to the next resistance, but it, it does jump here, comes back down and reverses. Why? Resistance from the previous day also. Okay. So these levels hold true again and again uh, all the time. So remember always look at three days worth of data and not just one particular day which is the reason why we stick on uh, one hour charts now there was a question from well, some of you guys asking can I trade this on a four hour uh, uh, four hour time frame I personally would not recommend it because the wait time is way too long and also your trade sizes are going to be much much larger which means when you make a profit obviously you are going to be making thousand pips at a time but when you make a loss you'll also be making a thousand pips loss at a time and I I currently do not think uh, people are ready to see a thousand pip losses in a single day or in a, in a matter of hours um, so that can be quite uh, daunting at, uh, when you start off with the strategy as you get better at 1,000 pips, 2,000 pips in a day, it doesn't make a difference. But right now, we need to train you guys to look at the strategy, get used to the numbers, because the numbers will come in and out. It'll fluctuate, and you need to get used to that. Because we're no longer working with 20 pips a day, 30 pips a day, and I will show you guys how to maximize profit from going from a simple 20, 30 pips a day to uh, 100, 200, 300 pips in a day. Okay, uh, same goes for if you have losses, you, you will hit those kind of numbers as well. Okay, now let's take a look here. Now, when we look at three days worth of data, the three days worth of data also comes with a range called the guaranteed profit range. Okay, now 
let me show you an example. Okay. Let's say this is the current day. One, two, and three days worth of data. Okay, we have three days worth of data. The market's moving, it comes down here, and it creates an exhaustion look like, for some reason, let's say it's a perfect exhaustion, and you say, okay, good, I'm gonna enter long now. How long can I go? When you look at the last three days, okay, one, two, three. What is the next line? If you go long, what is the next line on its way, the closest line to the market? Okay, this one of these lines are the closest ones to the market. Let's, if we draw them all, okay, we draw one there, we draw one here, and we draw one there. Okay? So, if you go long, you know from here all the way to the first line, that is called the guaranteed profit zone. There's nothing stopping you that's on the way there. You're going to go ahead and accumulate those pips no matter what because you're looking at the last three days worth of data, you know there is no support and resistance on its way to stop you. Okay, so this only holds true if you have an exhaustion bouncing off of a support or resistance line. Okay, if you do not have a formation at a support resistance line, this guaranteed profit zone does not exist. These exhaustions that are created are created because of um, changes in direction by the bigger players. Now, I'm not going to get too much into detail into all that stuff. I will hold another webinar on uh, psychology and uh, the market momentum, the way paperwork are processed and all of that stuff. But as of right now, that, that's too much for you guys to handle quite yet. Um, we will make that another advanced course and uh, you know we will get you guys ready. Don't worry. Okay, so you guys get the idea now. Well, you get an exhaustion around a pivot line, you make a turnaround, and you go towards your next uh, your next target. Okay, now let's take a look at this one. Uh, where is my arrow? There we go. We have an exhaustion here. Okay, we have a resistance line right around there. Get an exhaustion, and the market starts to move. You know at least you can reach till the next line which is right here from here to here it, it won't stop you you can go okay now I see there's some questions let's go through the questions right now um, three days including of current day no current day is one day current day previous day and the day before that okay JD is saying so the three days include the current day as well yes it does um, Tony is asking, uh, is it only ever a sell exhaustion off R pivots and buy off of... No, there's no such thing as R and S pivots. Um, treat them as lines, nothing else. Call them, I call them pivot lines completely. Okay, They can bounce off of either ways because what happens is, let me show you. Let me get you a good example so you guys can know what we're talking about here. Now take a look here. Market's moving up. This right here is resistance. Okay? It's resistance here. It crosses through the resistance and now it's become support. It goes on to the future and again it uh, tries to reach support. So it's not necessarily that it's support or resistance or anything like that. Just treat it as what it is. Now same thing with this level here. Take a look. It's resistance here, but then it, once it crosses through, it becomes support. You can see here. So it, this happens again and again. So just treat them as lines, nothing but a uh, barrier line. Okay. Uh, does the exhaustion candle um, drop that screen frozen? Okay. Let's uh, restart um, screen sharing. Okay, let me know when the screen is back up. And boom, we're back. Perfect. Okay, um, I'm sorry, did, did we have any any questions uh, before I got disconnected? I think uh, every webinar I get disconnected. It, it's like tradition now. So, um, okay, let's 
take a look through here. Uh, questions, questions. Uh, okay. All right, let's let's continue here. Now, we got the point of correlation. We we are understanding uh, also our uh, pivot lines. So the pivot lines basically hold true as support and resistance. I think the last question that we had was uh, um, the R one S one again. So don't don't worry about the R one S one. Those words. It, it is all just a a roadblock. Okay, if you're in in the market and there is a line coming up. It is your roadblock. And if you do cross that line, it is now uh, a block that's behind you. Okay. So now we got that out of the way now. Okay. So we are we know what exhaustion candles are. They're just pin bars or hammers, inverted hammers, and we know what uh, pivot points are. How to use them? How many days worth of them? And uh, last but not least, we know that uh, uh, now w we know that where we have our guaranteed profit zones. Now we're going to talk about maximizing the profits. Now, okay, let's uh, let me get this up all here so I can hear you guys. Okay, now we're going to discuss uh, maximizing profit. So, so you know you can get twenty pips out of this one pair. Okay, for example. Uh, now let's let me give you guys a nice trade so you guys can take a look through and follow along. Okay. Okay, so let's say for example you enter this exhaustion. Okay, this exhaustion forms. You want to go short, and if you're looking for the next three days, uh, last three days, the next level is here. There's nothing stopping you until there. Which means what? How many pips is that? Um, your guaranteed pips is approximately 50 pips. Uh, pretty decent number, right? But the thing is that once you do your analysis, and uh, if your analysis is correct, for the most part, using this strategy, your analysis is going to be correct because you're catching the right trade and you're catching it at the right direction. So if your analysis is correct, you look at correlation, you look at other pairs that are also doing the same thing. How do we do that? Let's take a look. There is a website you can go to Oanda. Let me Google this right here for you guys. Um, my Google is a bit slow because I'm out in China. Okay, you can type the word currency correlation. Oanda. Okay. Once you type currency correlation on it, it's the first link that you see. If you click on that, it'll open, and uh, I will show you how this works. Okay. We will uh, put this on our website as well, so you guys don't have to go here all the time. Now, I use something called a heat map. Now, if I click on Euro USD, everything that is red goes in our favor together. So if I'm selling Euro USD, I'm gonna sell all these other pairs that are red. If I am buying, uh, uh, I'm sorry, if I'm selling Euro USD, then all the ones that are blue, I'm gonna be buying. So that means usually US dollar CAD and US dollar Swiss franc go opposite of Euro USD. Okay, so there are there are seven pairs that I like to follow and uh, if you, you guys want, might want to write this down, if you guys don't already have it. And I recently added the eighth pair. Okay, Euro USD, Pound Dollar, uh, Euro Yen, Aussie Dollar, New Zealand US. Um, what am I missing here? One, two, three, four, five, and gold, okay? Which is XAU, USD. And the pairs that go opposite of these are US Dollar CAD, and US dollar Swiss franc. These are the pairs I follow. If I take a buy in all of these, I take a sell in these two. If I take a sell on all of these, I take a buy on these two. All I need is one or two pairs to give me the trade. Once I get the trade from one or two pairs, I enter everything. Because 
the main thing is what I teach you guys is to trust your analysis. Once you trust your analysis, there's nothing stopping you. Okay, especially if you've done the research, you've done uh, the background check on uh, the pairs that you're going to be entering. You've done your due diligence, and it's only once per hour. You don't have to sit in front of your screen all the time. The, the, we're always looking at the one hour charts, nothing less. And the one hour charts basically at the five minutes before the candle closes, you can come, take a look at it, see if there's an exhaustion, see if the correlating pairs are doing the same thing, then you enter everything, okay? Because you've done your research and you can trust it so you can enter more than one pair that are correlating. The, which then what it does is maximizes your profit. Your 50 pips that you were gonna gain here suddenly earns you 300, 400 pips in that same matter of time, if not less. When you have more pips in less time, you will close the trade. Okay? You will end up closing the trade because if it takes you three hours and you're making only six pips, there's a chance you probably won't close the trade. But if you're making suddenly 400, 500 pips in a matter of 20 minutes, you will end up closing the trade a little bit sooner than later because your mind is satisfied and that's a, that's a psychology course that I have to give you guys but it's it's good um, and you you guys can find this course on I believe it's uh, uh, forexpros.com I did a webinar with them on uh, forex psychology uh, for uh, uh, their viewers so forex pros the news publishing you can check with them and uh, you'll, you'll find the psychology over there but uh, yeah anyways um, moving on so Correlation can help you add profit and also reduce risk because if you have a trade, for example, here and you buy and it doesn't go in a buy as quickly, the correlating pairs might. So in one pair that you actually did your research on is getting you five pips in profit, a correlating pair might just shoot off suddenly and get you 300, you know. So with the correlation or with correlating pairs, you're always a step ahead. Also, you're always hedged at a certain time because sometimes if the market goes against you, because of your correlation, some trades might actually go the other way and it might save you. So you have a hedge and a uh, uh, profit increase at the same time. Uh, let me just turn off the noise of the chat room. So, Okay, um, questions. Uh, do you enter the trade on the next candle or do you wait for the retrace? We enter at the next candle. Okay. Uh, what if the correlated pair shows the opposite? Okay, when you have anti-correlation, you need to stand aside. Good question. Now, for example, let's take a look here. In the last one week, Aussie dollar is not correlating with Euro USD. But over over the over the long period of time, between uh, three months to two years, it has been. Okay? But Aussie dollar and New Zealand dollar have not been correlating with Euro USD as they usually do. Okay, but if we look, for example, let's take a look at uh, Swiss franc. Okay, these Euro USD and pound dollar, take a look, they always go opposite of Swiss franc. Always. One week, one month, three months, six months, one year, two years. They always, always, always go opposite. So whenever you have a trade on Swiss franc, if you're selling, you buy on these currencies. If you're buying, then you sell on these currencies. Okay? All right, uh, next question. So, um, so in that example, you would uh, have to be in a trade for approximately 13 hours and, car I'm sorry, and carry the trade over to the next day. That particular trade, yeah, you would have to, but that's a close of day. I, I particularly trade during the, the London hours and up to mid-US session. Those are the hours that I personally like. It's not necessarily true for um, everybody. You can trade at any time um, as long as the markets are open. If there is a bank open somewhere, trade. If there is no banks open, it's closing time. Um, like there is that dead zone uh, after the Asian, uh, Asian session blah, blah, blah. Or, or the US and before the start of the Asian there's like a two or three hour dead zone don't trade there because nobody is moving the market other than supply and demand just by the consumers so that's why all these EA start coming out scalping uh, on these dead zone times it's very very risky okay do you enter on the market or limit order uh, Walter asks uh, Walter enter on market Okay, 
and uh, that's why also we have this batch order um, on uh, on our website. So those of you, instead of actually entering all the trades one by one, you can actually just activate the script and it enters all the trades for you correlated. So which is re really really nice. Okay, for those of you, some of you I know do not have gold uh, available because I know a lot of the U.S. traders do not have gold available to them. So what you do is you click X A U U S D, and you see which ones are red. Okay. Red means they correlate with it. Aussie dollar correlates with it. New Zealand dollar correlates with it. Um, again, don't just look at one bar. Make sure you see an overall. Okay. Uh, and Euro Yen has been going opposite the last uh, one week. So XAU, there is no substitute as of right now. There's mixed results everywhere. So, um, and we already have New Zealand dollar and Aussie dollar in our list. So if you cannot trade gold, uh, tough so far. Um, but when when there is a correlation, I will let you guys know. Okay, so continuing. Um, now going into the little bit more advanced advanced things. Now we had some questions here. What 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 questions did we have? We had currency strength. Okay. Now many times you guys have seen me uh, talk in the chat room um, and those of you who are also members of my uh, Forex Watchers team uh, you guys know that uh, I always talk about something called a leading pair and lagging pair what does that really mean okay let's, let's go over that that can actually make a big difference in uh, in a trade what happens is something like this the market is currently moving okay when something like this happens uh, like this right here that has a decent movement and has a tail and everything the market starts to move everything usually mimics some go with it at the same speed some go slower okay when some who go ahead now for example this uh, let me show you actually a better example so you guys don't get confused let's look for an exhaustion a clear exhaustion so everybody knows what we're talking about okay um, guys uh, regarding the time of this webinar I'm, I'm gonna exceed the time okay I'm gonna I'm gonna go past the one hour time uh, time frame so um, let's see here okay so you have this exhaustion here this exhaustion forms bounces off of this line and you're gonna be going long now this particular candle the exhaustion is forming okay but if you look at another pair maybe at this time you probably see something similar to this you see a, a massive rise on a correlating pair it's it's gone up so high so you know now the US dollar CAD is a lagging pair because it's catching up to this it's this sort of movement it's not there yet now once that happens you watch the lagging pair, you see if it's creating any exhaustions and you have an idea by looking at the rest that okay, market's going to do something. So let's take a look at this. What does this really mean? Um, when did this happen? This happened on March 23rd at 11 o'clock on my screen. Let's look at, take a look at March 23rd, 11 o'clock. Um, let's see here. March 23rd, 11, here we go, 11 o'clock, same exhaustion here, okay, there we go, so also correlating pair, they both want to go long, US dollar should be going short for March 23rd, um, let's take a look at March 23rd, scroll, 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 There we go, March 23. Okay, same thing, 11 o'clock. Where is 11? It's right there. Okay, as a correlating pair, it wants to go opposite. And you can see also it's an exhaustion. So, when you have this thing, you've done your analysis only on one pair. But you know due to correlation, everything is going to move with it. Okay, so when you have your uh, analysis done, you have the analysis ready don't just take it on that one pair take it on the rest trust your analysis you'll do fine and you'll in fact make a lot more profit than you can ever imagine so now in this particular case there is nothing that's leading or lagging because everything looks the same okay but in certain cases when you have an exhaustion 
for example, like this one, the other correlating pair might show something like this. Something that it has a small tail but a large run like this. It's kind of gone all the way out. Okay? That becomes the leading pair. It means everything is going to start to follow that. It's already left the platform. And these other trains are catching up to it. And that's when you know that, okay, market's starting to move. Jump in on it. Okay? And you will start to see this before the close of the hour usually. And uh, whether there's news or not, this will go in your favor. Because usually a news movement always, always, always has... What's a nice way to put it? <laughs> There's always people who trade the market, who know what's going to happen on the news, to put it in a nice way. And you can always see this in the market live in front of you. So um, look at the charts, no need to look at the news. And uh, again, that's, that's, that's my way of looking at things. You can look at the news, I'm sorry. But I never watch the news whatsoever because what you see on the news and what actually happens in the market is always, always different. And you always wonder why. Okay, so continuing on. Um, uh, okay. So leading pairs and lagging pairs. Keep an eye out for them. And I will see if I can have some more examples on our website for leading pairs and lagging pair examples. When I can't seem to find the one right now. But when we do, I'm going to take screenshots of it and share it with you guys. All right, uh, currency strength, um, that, that goes with leading and lagging. You can tell which, strong, which currency is stronger at what moment. Okay, um, uh, we have a question. Um, let's take a look here. Once you keep an eye on them, what do you do with them? Uh, keep an eye on what, Tony? Um, the leading pairs and lagging pairs? It tells you that the market is going to go in that direction for sure. And the lagging pair is a good way to get in on it. Okay. Now, another thing that can happen, the, the leading pair, for example, if the market is uh, in an exhaustion like this, um, let's just continue with that one that I pointed to, an exhaustion like this, there is w one chart that's already, uh, sorry, there is one chart that's already gone down like this, the correlating pair has already gone way too fast, and this one's moving very slowly like that the next candle is moving very slowly and then you start to see an exhaustion form on the bottom on the other chart you know that this this move for this currency is over that means there is way too much pressure to go north does that make sense so the, you know that the move on this currently currency pair is going to die out soon so it, it doesn't make you somebody who's reading out of a crystal ball you're just actually just looking at other pairs and you get to know what's actually happening in the market this is called a bird's eye view okay never 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 look at just one currency pair because that will not give you the complete picture of what's going on look at different currencies that are working with that pair and you, you get a better idea okay so um, moving on forward now what else do we have here we have, we've gone through correlation, support resistance, we've discussed with pivot points, trend continuation patterns. Okay, this is the money maker um, during trending markets. Okay. All right, here we go. Let's take a look. All right, so these are exhaustions. Right here. That tell you a reversal in the market. Can anyone tell me what they might think a trend continuation pattern is. What, the, what do you think it looks like? Any guesses while I find one? Uh, there was one that we were looking at just now. Uptrend pullbacks, uh, George says um, okay we got a lot of responses one second let me just look for one and then we'll, we'll uh... okay I, I see a very nice one okay so let's take a look here now um, okay higher tops and higher bottoms mm, okay no wicks upside down exhaustion I think you said yes very good John um, totally an exhaustion candle pointing in the trend direction very good totally Tolly, totally, totally. I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. 
Um, Mihaly says the exhaustion kind of that shows the same direction as strength. Good. Okay, now let's take a look what it means. All right, this right here is a trend continuation pattern. The market's going down. You can see a sharp movement down. Next candle opens. It retraces, makes a big tail, comes back down, and closes. Where does it retrace to? It retraces to your pivot line. So, how many pivot lines does it retrace to? One, two, and three. Okay. Do you think this is a good trend continuation pattern? Yes, it is. Market continues down. These trend con continuation patterns are quite strong and they can be quite profitable. Okay, these are all trend continu continuation patterns here. This one, this one, and the one next to that, that one. These are trend continuation patterns. Okay. It reaches a resistance lines and the trend continuation pattern stops. So can you use it alone? No. You always need your support and resistance line. That's all you need in the market is your candlesticks and your support and resistance and nothing else. Take a look at this one. You might be thinking, oh, but this one didn't work. It actually did. It's a trend continuation pattern. How far will it go? Again, three days worth of data right here is the next support line and it bounced exactly from there and turned around but people who do not know this information might just be selling selling and selling and hoping that okay sooner or later it's going to come back and it, it never does you know and that's when you you take a, a, a large hit so knowing all this information really really helps now let's let's continue here Okay, another trend continuation pattern that's bouncing off of support and resistance right here. Nice downtrend, market has a trend continuation right there, which bounces off of yesterday's pivot line, goes all the way down to the next level, and then turns around. So these trend continuation patterns have quite a bit of money to make off of too, and especially if you use it with correlation, it's, it's quite nice. Okay, so does, does everyone understand a trend continuation pattern so far? So uh, Sardar says, so exhaustion candle only give information till next pivot line. Um, no, not really. Exhaustion candles just basically mean a, a reversal in trend. And uh, once you know the reversal in trend, um, you just know when to exit. The pivot lines just help you knowing when to exit or where the halt is coming up. Okay. All right. Good, good. So we are on track so far. Any questions, stop me. Okay. False exhaustions. Let's discuss that. A lot of people had questions about this. What is a false exhaustion? Let's discuss that. This right here is a false exhaustion. Did it work? Yes, it did. But is it a real exhaustion? No. Why? Look at the way the candle is shaped. The size of the, the, the body, the size of the tail, they practically look similar. Okay. Now, when you have something like this and then you compare it with the rest of the pairs, if you have something similar, if not uh, something totally different, false exhaustions. Also, take a look at this one. This is also a false exhaustion. The body is too small and the tail below it is bigger than the body. You need to have the body in one corner. You can have a tail, but not too big. The body needs to be in one corner. Okay? So, now, um, question is, any reason not to take the trade even after an exhaustion is formed? Yes, when you have a false exhaustion, do not, do not take the trade. Okay, can you go over trend continuation again, please? Yes, we can. Okay, let's go, let's go over them again. Now, let's take a look at... Uh, some trend continuation patterns here. Let's see if we have something on the current market so you guys will be more familiar. Uh, recent markets here. Uh, here we go. Market is flying up and a trend continuation pattern. How? Where is it bouncing off of? Our support here. This has been a support over here. It's been a support over here and also a support over here market moves up 
we are now long and how long are we long you guys already know the answer to that the next pivot line in the last three days in the current day to the last two days 30 pips of guaranteed profit with nothing stopping you in between okay you use correlation that 30 pips will become 200 300 pips okay does that make sense is, 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 is. okay um, next question is uh, Ram says uh, oh sorry um, Kaylin, so uh, we stay in a trade instead of stopping at confirmed profit if we see trend continuation on all correlated pairs. Yes, if you see a trend continuation. Now, when do you know you get a trend continuation pattern? This is how you know. This is where the money comes in. The bigger money comes in, I guess. The market's moving. Yeah? Let's take a look. Let's find you a good, 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 good example. So it's easier to understand and then in due time you'll start to see it unfold and you won't even have to actually look for them you'll start to see them automatically um, let's see I need an exhaustion with a trend continuation to make it look Okay, as I'm looking for that, I just want to give you guys a heads up on something. If, uh, when you see an exhaustion that's created and the market turns around and it starts going in your favor, if you see tails forming on the other side, exit soon. Market is coming to a halt. Okay, start to exit soon. Okay, so we have some trend continuations here. Okay. Market goes up, comes down, and let's put a arrow on our support right here for three days. This is the current day, yesterday, day before. Okay, let's make it today. Okay, here we go. Current day, yesterday, day before, our support line. Trend continuation. Market moves up, comes down. You know where you can hold your, if you hold stops, you know where you can use your stops. As you see these trend continuation patterns, you know when you can continue to stay in a trade. Now, same thing applies, uh, let's take a look over here. There is a trend continuation pattern, but it formed after this. Okay, This candle opens. When do you know when to enter this trend continuation pattern? Let me explain. This candle closes right here. Next candle opens. It goes up. It retraces. It retraces to where? Uh, resistance line right here starts to come back down and then it closes down here you see this pattern and you know okay it bounced off of that thing it's traded a trend continuation pattern we're golden we're gonna sell you sell it goes up again do you panic no because you know how far up it can go it's once you take a look at all the support and resistance patterns everything is in your hands you know how far it, up it can go it stops there, turns around, another trend continuation pattern. Now our support has moved to here, our resistance, I'm sorry. And your target levels are now here. Okay? Target level happens, it crosses through, you can choose to exit, or you can choose to hold on if you see a trend continuation pattern on the candle preceding that. Next candle opens up, you wait. You wait for a retracement to go up to create a trend continuation pattern, but that doesn't happen. The market just shoots down more profit but if it starts to retrace once it starts to retrace and it goes up if it crosses the previous candle exit okay let me explain what that means um, show you an example of when it crosses the previous candle um, let's see okay trend continuations here Okay, one, two, three, market goes down, goes down, and we have a halt here, exhaustion, and it crosses above the previous candle, exit, if you haven't already exit. Did you touch your support? Maybe, maybe not, but the next candle started to go above, exit. This exhaustion should also give you a heads up, exit. 
Okay, does, does, it, does it make sense? Uh, does it make sense to everybody? Uh, John, does the leading pair determine where the trade trade is over uh, when the trade is over? It reaches the next pivot. Yes, if you have a leading pair that's reaching its pivot point quicker than the one that you did your analysis on, exit everything because there is a reason why the leading pair is moving, and that's the reason why your pair that you did your analysis on is moving. It is not the sole reason why it's moving. Okay. You do your analysis on one pair and it moves, but it's not because it's a news on euro or it's a news on dollar. It might be because there's something happening with gold. And if gold is reaching the support resistance before your pair, exit. And if you've already done correlation, you've already made your profit, it doesn't matter, exit. Does it make sense so far to everybody? Everyone's still with me? Okay, good. Okay, is your USD uh, if your USD shows bullish hammer and New Zealand USD shows bearish hammer, what do you do? You stand aside. You have anti-correlation, which is the reason why we last week all anti-correlation. It's been rough even for me. Um, the whole trading of last week was not so good for me either. So, what you have anti-correlation at times. That's that's fine. That's normal. Uh, it goes away. Okay. Tony, uh, say that bit again, please. Okay, when you have anti, uh, do you you want me to repeat the anti-correlation part or something else? Okay. Um, well, I think you're talking about anti-correlation. So, Tony uh, from Australia, when you have anti-correlation, if one pair is going one way and the correlating pair is going the other way, stand aside. Stand aside. About the leading lagging. Okay, Tony, you're asking about the leading lagging pairs. Okay, you enter, I'll, I'll give you a good example. What pairs do we know that correlate? Euro USD correlates with pound, right? We all know that. Euro USD goes down, pound goes down. Euro USD goes up, pound goes up. So we all know that. So if Euro USD is going down, you've done your analysis, you've, you see, for example, a trend continuation pattern, and you're like, okay, I'm going long with the sucker. Um, or I'm going short on this particular sell. I'm selling here. The next trade, it's moving slowly. You know, you sold right here. And it hasn't sold much on the next candle. But on pound, maybe you might have something like this. Something that's moved dramatically and it's reached a uh, uh, pivot line. What do you do? Do you wait for this one to come to its pivot line? No. You exit. Because... Chances are you've already made a ton of profit. This one might be at zero or even at minus two pips. That's fine. You've made your profit from the correlating pairs that have already led the market. Okay? So this is why leading pairs and lagging pairs are important to watch. Lagging pairs gives you a heads up that there's a trade coming. Leading pairs gives you a heads up that there's a trade that needs to be closed. Does that make sense? Okay. So, let's take a look through. Um, okay, good, good. Uh, what is the website with exhaustion candles, indicator, and correlation? Uh, the website address is here, uh, urbanforex.ning.com. Okay, now that we have this information, um, okay, there are quite a few people in the room now. Now, we're going to flip things around. We're going to make this interactive. I'm going to start picking on people and making this educational. I'm sorry if you hate me, but... Uh, it's the only way people learn is by doing. Okay? It's easy to sit here and watch me say all this stuff, uh, especially on market that's already happened. It's closed market. Obviously, I do this live in live analysis hour by hour for uh, my members in Forex Watchers. Uh, in fact, uh, we have a promotion right now. Whoever wants to join ForexWatchers.com, for the first 20 members who join the monthly membership program, uh, we are giving them my conference room access. Okay, so you will get conference room access without going for the quarterly subscription. Again, um, I am trying to make a sale there. I'm sorry if you guys don't like sales pitches, but uh, it's what keeps Urban Forex alive. Okay, so continue on, moving on forward. Now, I'm going to pick a trade. I want you guys to tell me if it's a good exhaustion, if it's a bad exhaustion, and what pairs I'm going to be trading with, and also... Once we find out what pairs we're going to be trading with, um, where am I going to exit also? I want you to give me the full plan. Enter, 
exit, which pairs you want to trade, and why. I want all that information. And the market is currently moving really strongly. Let's take a look what's going on. Let's take a look at the current market real quick, and then we'll find out. Euro USD is moving. Pound is moving. Okay, pound. What do you see right now happening in pound? What what comes to your mind when you look at pound right now? Okay, let's put all these lines here. You see that a trade is potentially forming for a, a long. Okay, right? Everyone see that? You see a trend continuation pattern possibly forming? Candle is still moving. We cannot trade this. We have to wait till the candle closes. We have to wait for additional 28 minutes to reach the top of the hour to see what happens here. But, so you have an idea that there is a possible long coming up. Let's take a look at Euro USD. It's already going up. It's leading. You know it's going to go long. Okay? So, analysis number one. Pound will go up. Euro USD is already leading. US dollar CAD already leading it's short already US dollar Swiss franc okay now we're having problems three pairs already took off pound it did not Aussie dollar okay there we go now Aussie dollar is also catching up trend continuation pattern New Zealand dollar okay there we go trend continuation pattern okay euro yen took off and finally gold gold now is going South. It's selling. Gold usually correlates with Euro USD and pound and Euro uh, yeah, Euro USD and pound it usually correlates with. What does that mean? At the top of the next hour, you want to look for a possible exhaustion on gold. You want to look for a nice clear trend continuation pattern on pound, a trend continuation pattern on uh, I think it was Aussie on Aussie. That's when you know you're going to go long um, on all these pairs and short US dollar CAD, US dollar Swiss franc. You know your exit levels um, at the next pivot line, which is here, up here. Let me show you that. So it's a, it's a nice uh, free flow of the market to move. Okay, so going back to the interactive trading part. Now, so uh, you can take the trade without gold, of course. Many of you cannot trade gold anyways uh, because you're in the US and that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, just that sometimes gold gives a lot of gain, but once when you have a loss, it also it gives you a bigger loss as well. So it's a, it's a, it's a double-edged sword, if you want to call it like that. Okay. All right, continue. Um, send questions. Yes, uh, these questions are not coming because uh, I don't have this attendee room disabled. At. I, I left it open for in case anybody wants to chat with anybody privately to ask them anything. But uh, I, let's just focus. Let's not do that. Um, okay. Now, pound is still looking good for now, but let's forget the current market. It's still a good 25 minutes away. Uh, let's discuss a particular trade. And let's see. Uh, let's see. Who do we have in the room here? Now, let's, let's see here. I'm going to pick on three of you guys I want you guys to get me an analysis okay okay Ram you're volunteering okay so we'll pick four we'll have a volunteer also so Ram you are one of them um, we'll choose uh, Joshua Buckley we'll choose Judah from London and we will choose Richard uh, Briley from the US okay Here's the, here's the question here. Let me get you a nice pair. And we will do a complete analysis top to bottom. Okay. This is yesterday's market. Yeah? 11th of April. 11th of April, you're looking at New Zealand dollar, US dollar. This particular exhaustion, sorry, let me put the chart back. This particular exhaustion forms. What do you do? Candle closes. What happens? Okay. First things first. Okay, Ram. What once this exhaustion happens? What are you gonna do? Ch 
check for correlated pairs. Okay. Um, uh, I believe Judah was the other person. Um, can you tell me which pairs are correlating with New Zealand dollar, U.S. dollar? Euro USD, okay, Euro USD correlates, pound correlates, very good. Okay, Dave is volunteering, he says five pairs. Okay, good, good. So we have our correlated pairs. CAD not, okay, good. CAD as actually goes opposite. So he, here are the pairs. So New Zealand dollar, if we are going to sell, on New Zealand dollar, we are going to sell all of these and we are going to buy over here. Okay, so let's write this down. We're gonna sell, we're gonna buy on these two, okay? Let's see how long does it actually take to do an analysis. People get freaked out like, oh my God, I have to spend so much time on the screen. No, 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 no. I'm making this interactive. Let's actually calculate how long it actually takes to do an analysis and how long it takes to see the profit come out. It is now 738 on my screen, okay? Let's continue. So, we take a look at New Zealand dollar. We see there is an exhaustion forming. What does this exhaustion mean? Is this a trend continuation pattern or does this mean the market is gonna reverse? Thinking that you cannot see the future, but just uh, avoid the future. Um, okay, this exhaustion candle is quite beautiful. It tells you that, look, booyah everybody. I look nice, I'm bigger than everybody, and I stick out. Okay, nice long tail, small body, reversal. Good, Judah. Okay, so it's a reversal. Um, the reversal takes place bouncing off of how many resistance? This is day one, even the third day bounces off of there, and over here. Now, Whenever you're using support and resistance, don't always just think that the tail, the tip must touch the resistance. No, 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 no. The body, as long as the body is on the other side, the tail can go as far as it wants. That's fine. The body is the one that we're worried about. The body is below all these resistance. Okay? You can see the last five candles never crossed above these areas. Now, what else do we know? Take a look at yesterday, the day before that. This level has held true also. It's, it, it was support before. Then it broke through and now it's resistance. Okay, so we have a lot of analysis that we just looked at. Okay, okay so we're going to sell. So we sell. Let's take a look at the time. We sell at the opening of the next candle at 1800. Okay, but before we sell, let's take a look at the other pair at 1700. Do we have exhaustions on the other pairs? Okay, 1800 that time was. Uh, 18, 1700, sorry. 1800 was the time when it moved. Let's just reconfirm the time. Okay, the candle was hap happened at 1700. So let's take a look at Euro USD yesterday at 1700. Okay, does that look nice to you guys? For a cell, this candle right here. Big long tail, the candle on the bottom. Okay, let's put our lines in. Boom, right there. Next candle obviously open below that. Okay, Euro USD looking good. Let's look at, take a look at one more pair, okay? Just for the sake of analysis. Take a look at one more pair. Pound, 1700. Pound, 1700. Does that look nice for a cell? Is there any barriers on the way? Okay, there is a barrier on the way, but the next candle opens right above it. Okay, so we have one barrier on the way. Let's take a look at the other pairs. Do we have a buy on US dollar CAD at 1700? 1700 is this candle. Okay, any barriers there? Candle opens here, and the barrier is a few pips away. Okay. So all in all, everything looks great to enter. So you enter the trade. Now, where do you exit? Do you exit here? Do you exit here? 
Do you exit on this yellow line, the first one? Do you exit on the second yellow line, or is there a different criteria? What do you do? Okay, Ram says the first one. Joshua says first pivot line. Okay, any other guesses? John, John Barry from the UK says three days. Sardar Udin from Selden says first. JD from Perth says that's your guaranteed profit. Okay, where do you exit? That's the question. Million dollar question, where do you exit? More guesses, more guesses. Half position on each line, okay. Uh, Judah, from I would look for exhaustion candle on lower time frame. Um, you can do that, but uh, avoid looking at different time frames. There's no need. That will only save you a few pips, and it's not worth that struggle for a few pips. Because you usually when you're struggling for a few more extra pips, you end up giving back more. Okay? Um, Dave says first line is guaranteed. Reza Ali from California says uh, first pivot line in the past three days. Okay, nearest line in the first three days. Okay, everybody with their analysis is correct. Okay, I'm not going to say no, it's not correct because from what you've learned, that is correct. But you need to understand when the market is moving, you need to look at all your pairs. You need to look at the leading pair. Which pair moves the fastest? on its way to the next pivot line. That is where we're going to exit. If Euro USD on the next candle, take a look at the next candle, has it reached its uh, um, guaranteed profit zone on the next candle? Here is the guaranteed profit zone for Euro USD. We enter here. The candle closed. Have we reached here yet? No. The next candle actually shot upwards. We started to lose profit. But why? We haven't reached there. Are we going to reach there? Yes, we are. No matter of that, we are, are going to reach there. But it becomes a risk. Let's take a look at pound. Okay, we entered at the next candle, which is this one. Has it reached its guaranteed profit zone, which is here? No, it hasn't. Next candle turned around. Why? So, what you need to do is always, always look at the next candle and see which one is the leading pair and once the leading pair actually touches its closest guaranteed profit zone exit everything that will save you does that make sense to everybody and can you guys actually see how everything works together you cannot just look at one thing everything works together beautifully okay so now um, let's take a look. Aussie dollar yesterday, also at the seventeen hundred. We had a sell. We sell here, and what do you know? Aussie dollar might have been the first one to close up from here to here. Okay. Don't think that you're gonna get in one pair. You're gonna get three, four pips. It doesn't work like that. Yes, you will get a few pips on some pairs. But there is going to be two or three or four pairs that just skyrocket. And when they skyrocket, they put in your pocket 50 pips while the others give you two pips, three pips. Some of them might even give you minus five pips. Okay. Uh, John from UK is saying, uh, so if a correlating pair is very near uh, its next pivot, do we doubt entry? Um, yes, but that also depends on the strength. Now. If there is one pair that uh, the exit is nearby um, and all the other pairs have a free flow, there's a lot of space, you can still enter the market because the one that has the exit nearby might not be the leading pair. Okay, does that make sense? But if, if you see everything has an exit nearby, avoid it. Okay, and the word doubt should not exist in a trader's dictionary because as I explain in all webinars when in doubt do not trade okay only trade when you know everything is going to go your way because you trust your analysis the moment you doubt your analysis you should not put money on it at all it's not worth it okay so what if all pairs are similar uh, in clear landing pair where, uh, let's take a look at the screen here
Okay, so what if all pairs are similar to no clear landing pair? And then where do you exit? Uh, Tony, can you rephrase that again? I, I don't think I understood that question. Uh, Sadar Udin from Selden says, uh, so once you enter the trade, you follow leading pair. Yes, you, you look for a pair that reaches its uh, exit first. Okay. Okay, Sam Adams from Vienna says, when in doubt, stay out. There, you said it, Sam. Okay, Butterfly from Australia says, I'd rather be out of a trade wishing I was in than in a trade wishing I was out. Yes, that's, that's I, I actually read that quite a few times in our chat room too. It's a, it's a good, good, good line. Okay, if all pairs are similar, for example, no leading pair, where is the best place to exit if the pivot points are all nearby? If all pivot lines are nearby, you shouldn't be entering the trade to begin with. I just got the question, sorry. For example, if if your your next pivot line is five pips away and, and all your pairs is three to five pips away, don't enter, there's no need. Okay, because that's becoming a risk now. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Okay, now, it is now 7.48, so it took us exactly 10 minutes, including questions and answers, to go over the analysis. Do you really think you have 10 minutes per hour to spend on analysis? Okay, everyone has that kind of time. It's not even 10 minutes, it takes you five minutes. And once you take that time and you do your analysis, the best thing to do always is write it down. Write down which pairs do you think is strong? Write down what do you see? Write down which pairs you're gonna take and write down your potential exits or put a line on your screen and see which line touches first, okay? Uh, Arash from UK, UK says, uh, but regarding with uh, Oanda correlation yesterday, um, NUZ just been correlating the, the uh, gold, why should we take Euro, Aussie dollar, gold into account? Okay, because when you look at, uh, where is the currency correlation? Let me open it. Okay, now let's take a look at New Zealand dollar. Okay, everything that is red will go with New Zealand dollar. Okay, and everything that is blue will go against it. You can see just the last one week, we've had opposite sentiments, which is fine, but usually New Zealand dollar, gold go together, New Zealand dollar, pound, as you can see, go together, euro goes together, euro yen goes together, Aussie dollar definitely goes together, euro Swiss franc goes opposite, okay? So don't just look at that one week bar because in the one week, just like our uh, single day, you will have fluctuations due to news, due to any other reason, you, you will have fluctuations and that's fine. Just take a look at the overall trend. This will give you a heads up, okay? I hope that makes sense. Okay, next question. Um, uh, sorry, I didn't. Uh, so once you enter the trade, uh, Ram says, is the webinar recorded? Yes, it is. Um, but regarding with uh, Oanda correlation yesterday, okay, we got that one. Naveen, that indicator exhaustion, does it alert? Uh, exhaustion, uh, it should, yes, as far as I know. Um, it is available on the blogs. You can just look for exhaustion and type alert in the search and you will come to it. Here's the search area. Also, yeah, if um, for those of you... Um, for those of you who can afford Forex Watchers, you guys can come online. Uh, obviously, we have that promotion of 20 people. You guys can join. For those of you who cannot afford it, obviously, there is a little bit less analysis that I give. But yeah, you guys can join for free on Urban Forex. And there's a chat room. We have a lot of traders there every day. We just trade during the daytime. And whenever I get a chance out of Forex Watchers, I come and help you guys out uh, in this room to tell you guys what trades I'm taking, but I really don't go into why as much as I do in Forex Watchers, uh, just to be fair to them. Okay, um, okay, link to watch the webinar again. Uh, the, the link, it will be up on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash urban forex, and uh, when it will be up, I cannot say. Um, I usually take a very long time to edit the videos and put them back up online uh, because of time constraints. Okay, so, 
everyone knows that there is time to do your analysis. It's not hard. It, it is quite easy to do analysis and uh, just takes five minutes and you should be good. Now, Euro, uh, Euro USD has gone up now. Pound is creating a trend continuation pattern. Eight minutes to candle close. US dollar CAD took off at support right now. Now, I might wait for you guys, wait, talk with you guys for another eight minutes and I'm going to show you what this trade is going to end up looking like, what's going to happen. I'll give you an analysis, I'll tell you guys how I see things and then you guys can see how it actually works. Okay, US dollar Swiss franc took off, crossed all barriers. Okay, there we go, Aussie dollar is taking off, approaching next resistance. New Zealand dollar crossing above, good. Euro yen, and we're also crossing above, entering a uh, resistance area, and gold, just like we expected. Do you guys see this now? Now, do I have a crystal ball? Does anybody have a crystal ball for the markets? No. It's just simple analysis. You look at all the pairs. Now, what this basically is, is everything is going up, right? Everything is going long. Gold is our correlating pair as we wrote down, which means right now gold is the lagging pair because gold is going down, but it needs to catch up. So what is it doing? It's, it's on its way to create its, its exhaustion. So is it really difficult to predict the market? No. Okay. So I'm, um, obviously I'm going to do whatever I can to explain everything in a simple language so everyone understands because sometimes this can get mind boggling and the other analysts really, really frustrate the hell out of uh, poor uh, investors. And so, um, you know, we'll do whatever we can at Urban Forex to help you guys out understand this at, in a more simpler language. Okay, so that's that. Now, you guys can always look at that on your spare time. I'm just going to go over some questions. Now, any questions that we have, because the, the recording is becoming way too long and it's going to become hard to upload. I mean, China. Okay, so any questions so far? Let's see here. EURUSD is not looking like hammer it's going to form. Okay, uh, an, analyst, an analysis video from beginning to end would be great. Okay, John, um, yes, there would be. Actually, if you, you can go to forexwatchers.com. I will, uh, actually, let me show you here. I think I do have a video of uh, me making a live analysis on forexwatchers.com uh, in our conference room. Um, if you go to how it works, and you scroll down, there is, uh, I'm, I don't have VPN right now connected, but it's right here. Analyst uses the forecast live in action. You can see it here. I do some analysis there. And uh, again, for those, uh, just saying it again, there is 20, 20 seats I'm allowing uh, as promotion for a monthly membership can get access to my um, conference room. So uh, just uh, before we end the webinar, any questions? It is getting quite late here, and uh, I think uh, um, I think slide chat room. I think one of the members just signed up also, so there are now 19 seats available uh, for the promotion. Um, okay, any questions so far? Correlation, uh, false exhaustions leading, lagging, any questions whatsoever, we can go over them again. Um, next week, I am planning to have a uh, another webinar going through a little bit more advanced topics plus a little bit of on psychology. And uh, we will go through one webinar at a time now that's going to discuss things in, in details like trend lines, Fibonacci, um, support and resistance. You know, we're not going to go through a whole strategy. We're going to go through one thing and talk about it to the core so everyone can be really familiar with uh, particular uh, uh, things in the forex market you know I really want people to understand um, what a trend line is what a support and resistance is you know what is Fibonacci you know how can we use all these things and it's really important for a lot of you guys and uh, it, it's the, the information out there is really a mess sometimes so I will help you guys out with that um, so uh, confirming, um, 
that this is good time of day. Okay. okay, perfect. So everybody's saying this is a good time for the day. Um, uh, Dave is asking, Naveen, do you not use any indicator on your chart at all? No, I never use an indicator whatsoever. Talked about a video on analysis. Is that available to the public? Yes, it is. Uh, you can just go to forexwatchers.com and when you click on how it works and towards the bottom is uh, one of the analysis. It's just one of the days. Um, I will start recording all my analysis on a daily basis and uh, keep a uh, database for all the members at Forex Watchers. Every now and then I'll take a video or two out of there and I'll share it with Urban Forex for the rest of the public. Um, so we don't keep anybody behind. We, you know, we take care of people who also are cannot afford to come to Forex Watchers or do not wish to come to Forex Watchers. That's which is also fine. Um, but just to let you guys know, Forex Urban Forex is alive because of Forex Watchers, and we just kept that service to pay for Urban Forex and these webinars and stuff. Okay. Um, continue on. I tell I tell Naveen when to enter, exit the trade. I am his indicator. <laughs> Uh, Dean from the U.S. says 3.30 in the morning in California. Yeah, I'm sorry about the people in the States. This is the only time I can think of that I can get everyone together um, and also give me some time to get on here too, obviously. Um, Gold has formed a nice exhaustion, Salome from Sydney says. Okay, it is now 8.01, so let's take a look. Let's take a look. What do we have here? Okay, gold is going to go short. This is what we call a false exhaustion. Okay, why? Why do I say that? Take a look at the design of of uh, the exhaustion. The previous candle is giving us a trend continuation. The exhaustion has formed. The current candle is getting pressure from three days ago. Let's uh, put this line right there. Okay, it's bouncing off of that. This is going to go down. And th the candle did not close above our uh, support level. It did not pretty much go into our previous candle. So this is going to go short. So if if I were to take a trade, let me just, for the sake of an example, I'm going to sell this just to show you that this trade is going to go short. Okay, I'm going to open this up here and I'm going to keep this here for you guys to watch as we trade. Okay, now let's take a look at EURUSD. EURUSD looks good for a long currently. Let's continue on pound in decision. When you have a tail on top, a tail on bottom, and a body practically in the middle, that is what we call indecision in the market. US dollar CAD. Okay. Now, so I see gold as a false exhaustion. What is the reason why this exhaustion didn't work out? Why is the market not reversing? That's because we've approached resistance on everything. We've approached resistance, we've approached support, US dollar CAD has approached support, it is now going up, US dollar Swiss franc, it's done the same thing, it's not breaking through, okay, Aussie dollar, also reached resistance, now it's retracing, now, gold is going to mimic these trades for a while, now everything is retracing, how long will it retrace? To the next pivot line, once it retraces to the next pivot line, gold will have to turn around again which means this trade will possibly go down and maybe create another tail and a possible exhaustion so that the next hour or two hours then it starts going up so you have a good heads up of what's going on in the market if you take a look across all pairs and see okay what am i doing what do i need to do okay euro yen looks good for a short right now strong resistance on top Gold is going down, it'll drag down Euro Yen with it, it'll drag down Euro USD with it. Euro USD has space to go down. Okay. Pound, it'll drag down with it, it has space to go down. Okay. Gold is already in profit now as we speak. So, this is practically what you need to look out for. And uh, there will be more. Obviously, I will go into more and more and more details as we do more webinars and, uh, you know, I really appreciate you guys always following these webinars, and we have a uh, we have a lot of attendees um, this time. Uh, we had like 72, 73 members today, and uh, and it's it really feels nice to see a lot of people actually supporting um, the cause of urban forex and also learning from the strategy and trying really hard at it. So I, as long as you guys are trying are and are willing to learn, I am willing to teach. I have no problem. Okay, false exhaustion again, not very clear. Okay, Ram, we will let's go over false exhaustions. Now, 
exhaustions when they are formed and they are on its way down. Okay, uh, let me see if I can find you an exhaustion. Okay, does everyone agree that this is an exhaustion? Okay, everyone, okay, I'm getting yes, yes, yes. This is an exhaustion. Why is it an exhaustion? What makes an exhaustion an exhaustion? Okay, let's take a look at two things. Criteria number one. It needs a tail. It needs to stick out. You need to look at it. You, you need to walk from halfway across your room and look at your screen and be like, oh, it's an exhaustion. I can see the tail sticking out. Because on the left of the tail, it's all this black spot. It's, just, it's open area. That's one thing. The tail should stick out. Second thing, bouncing off of a resistance or support level. That's very important. Third thing, it must somewhat be inside the previous candle. You see this body? This body is inside the previous candle. It's giving us a complete turnaround in the market because of the body inside the previous candle. Let me show you another exhaustion so I'll give you an idea. Where is that New Zealand dollar trade actually that we saw? Here we go. You see this body here on the New Zealand dollar? It's inside the previous candle. It's, it's giving you a complete confirmation the market is going in uh, the market market is going to turn around same thing with here this is a trend continuation pattern because we're in a downtrend and the candle is inside same thing with this exhaustion that reversed us it is inside how far did it go up there you go you always have your answers right in front of your eyes okay exhaustion formed market goes up touches its pivot line exhaustion formed market goes down once the first barrier is crossed, it goes to the next barrier, and so on and so forth. And that's the way the market works all the time, from one line to the next. Okay. Now, you can see our trades are going well, then it slows down, then it goes high, then it goes down, which means we're getting now, we're approaching support and resistance somewhere where it's slowing down the market. Let's take a look around. So you can always also tell by your profits is that what do you need to do? Do you need to exit? Do you need to hold? You can tell by the speed of the momentum. Okay, every time we go into profit, if we see the profit go away again, then we see profit, then you see the profit go away again. That means there's pressure coming in to the other, from the other side. Okay, so that's one thing you guys need to watch. Now, um, Tony, uh, does the body inside previous candle also apply to trend continuation exhaustions? No, not at all. It only applies to a reversal exhaustion, an exhaustion candle, sorry. Ram says, how do you conclude Euro Yen was a sell uh, because of gold? Okay. Do I know Euro Yen is a sell? No, I can't tell from the last candle. It, it's, there's no saying. I know gold is a sell. Concluding Euro Yen will be a sell because of correlation. Now, along with the correlation, we have resistance here on top. So, okay, so we know temporarily Euro Yen is selling because of gold is selling. Okay, gold, on the other hand, now that it's selling, how far will it go? We have our, oh, sorry, we have our first level here. Okay, will it go to that level? Maybe, maybe not, because we have to look at our correlating pairs and see which one is actually leading. Euro USD is almost approaching its uh, support area. Pound is practically at its support area now. US dollar CAD is practically at its support uh, resistance area now. Uh, exactly crossed it. Uh, US dollar Swiss franc crossed. Aussie dollar approaching. It's still some ways to go. New Zealand dollar. It's crossed. Everything is crossed. Gold will, will come to this next pivot line and we will exit there. Okay. And we are currently running at, what, six pips of profit or $63, $65 of profit. So, um, going back to the questions, um, let's not get carried away with the trades. Uh, let's, okay. So, can you please explain current market false exhaustion? Okay, I'll go through that uh, again. Um, Ram, how do you conclude Euro Yen with the seller? We went through that. Um, Perry from the U.S. is saying, can you explain why gold is a trend continuation? Okay. 
It is not a trend continuation. When you have a false exhaustion, it doesn't really mean the market, the trend is going to continue. It just means that the market won't reverse. It could mean the market is going to go sideways. But based on what everything was looking like, okay, um, sorry, right here, we have reached our support now. It's time to exit. Our guaranteed profit is hit. We now close the trade. Now, notice that I saw the trade go up to $115 and I only took 88 when you reach your support or resistance, you close. You don't wait. You close. Whatever amount you get, you close. Okay. If you go for the small money, if you go for the extra dollar, extra two dollars, extra pip or two pips, you will end up giving back 10, 20 pips at a time. Okay. Always remember that. Don't be cheap with the market. Take what you can. Okay. All right. Um, Okay, Tony, uh, Naveen, I am impressed. I was standing to backslide, but I am a believer once more. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay, so um, uh, Perry, did you understand? Uh, no, we didn't We didn't go over a trend continuation. I'm sorry. Okay, so it, it, it means it's not a trend continuation when you have a false exhaustion. It just means the market is not going to reverse as, uh, as we were expecting it. Okay, it means it's one of two things will happen. Market will go sideways or it will go down. I hope that makes sense. And then we decide from the other correlating pairs what it's actually going to do. Okay. Um, Naveen, how do you know it's a false exhaustion? How do I know it's a false exhaustion? It's it's something you will start seeing in due time. Um, you can see that the candle is not inside the previous candle. Also, it's closing outside of our uh, support area. And I really recommend you guys pick up the FX Pro uh, MetaTrader and download the indicator because uh, the, I'm just used to the pivot points prices on uh, FX Pro on their server. It seems to be pretty good. So um, again, I will have the demo link of FX Pro's demo accounts uh, on our site, and if you open the demo through us, we will obviously be. I think uh, we. I think as far as they told us, um, we can obviously track everything. Uh, FX Pro has also given us uh, ECN capabilities for a lot of our members now. We are able to offer our members, a small members, $1,000 account holders to trade directly with banks. So that's a very good breakthrough for us and for a lot of our members. Um, Wasim, um, can you please explain why the exhaustion candle in gold is the false one? Okay, I think we, I think I just answered your question. You know, gold was a false exhaustion because of the body. Good, Ron, that's the, that's the reason why. Perry, is it because the candle closed outside the previous candle? Yes. Okay. Tony, how much is access to the conference room normally? Uh, the conference room is uh, $5.95. Uh, it's a three-month membership, but once you pick up the three-month membership, you have access to the conference room. Uh, the one month is $1.99. I'm sorry the price is a little bit steep, but uh, it's, it's just uh, once we had the calculations of how much it's going to take to run Forex watchers, the staff, Urban Forex and all of that stuff, we, we had to uh, keep these rates. Um, but yeah, this is the promotion. Um, the, the price is $199. Uh, it's just the first 20 people are getting the price of $199 per month, but also have access to uh, the conference room. The Forex Watchers actually gives forecasts. That's what we usually do at Forex Watchers. We, we tell you what the market is going to do in the next 11 hours. We predict um, you know, something similar to this. Uh, you know, we, we uh, where is my screen? Here we go. I make stuff like this on a daily basis. Um, the staff actually makes them, I edit them, and then we publish them every day before London open, and we tell you which direction the market's going to head, where is probably the best areas to buy and sell, and so on and so forth. Uh, Tony, what is your win rate with Forex Watchers? Uh, the forecasts have a good 80% success rate. Uh, they're quite strong. There is a performance page on Forex Watchers that you guys can always look at. Everything, um, uh, it's documented there. And uh, so, um, moving on forward, um, is there any other questions that we have? Uh, we've taken a trade together. We've explained everything also. Uh, do you ever consider dollar index? No, I do not. I do not look at dollar index. Tony, the performance page only has some videos, not a tally of wins and losses. Okay, that's because, Tony, the conference room is not recorded. Conference room, I am there sometimes. I'm not there all the time. 
Forex watches is a section for analysis, just like what we're doing now. You can you notice I'm not really focused on showing you how many pips I'm making with gold because that's not my concern. My concern is to make sure people understand what to look for. It's the analysis that we focus on, and it's the training. So. The, the level of education you get at Forex Watchers, it's the same thing you're getting right now in this webinar, but only difference is you're getting it on an hourly basis. Every hour, we study the market together. Okay? Okay, um, okay. Perry uh, says, there's no doubt the forecast is at least 80% uh, for the last year. Yeah, Perry, I believe you're a member with us for the longest time. Where do you place your stops? Okay, here is a good question. Everybody, actually a lot of people ask us about stops. If you ever notice, I don't use stops. And people, people usually tell me that, uh, uh, yes, you know, Naveen, you're a little bit crazy. You don't use stops. What's wrong with you? Here's the reason why. Let's take a look. Let me open up my charts again. Okay, another tail forming. It's bouncing off of our support. Guaranteed profits taken. Nice, huh? It's like... It's really like playing with the magic ball. It's really nice. Okay, so an example. We entered all of our correlating pairs, right? If I have a trade on Euro USD, why am I taking pound with why am I also trading pound? Why am I also trading New Zealand dollar? What is the reason? Any guesses? Butterfly says it correlates. Okay. Okay. Um, Dan says uh, for hedging. Uh, not really hedging, but yeah, you, you can lower your risk that way. Wasim says to make more pips. Okay, that's also correct. Now, do I when I enter Euro USD, do I enter pound at a later time? Or do I enter at the same time? Okay. Dave says same time, JD from Australia says same time, everybody is, is saying same time, yes. You enter at the same time. So, when you keep your stops, for example, if I keep a stop on uh, Euro USD and I get stopped out on Euro USD, does that mean I'm going to get stopped out on pound? Is that usually the case? Ram says no, no. Exactly my point. When you enter, you enter everything together. When you exit, you exit everything together as well. Now, if you're entering the trade and the trade goes against you, when the trade is going against you, for example, it's a bad day um, and the trade goes against you 400 pips, for example. And at 400 pips, if you cannot handle to see the amount that you're seeing in front of your eyes for minus 400 pips, your lot sizes are way too big. That's the whole thing. So the main concern is not really the stops. It's actually psychological. It's do you, can you handle a, a major catastrophe on your account if it goes minus 1,000 pips or minus 2,000 pips? What does that really mean to you? Does that mean $200? Does that mean $20,000? So it all depends on how much you want, how much you can tolerate and you set your lot size accordingly. Now, I've not hit more than 600 pips of a drawdown at any given time. I would say 600, yeah, that's, that's being fair. I mean, 600 is quite a large number, but uh, I've, I've not hit 600 pips uh, continuous as a loss in a long time. Last week was quite rough for us, even at uh, Urban Forex and Forex Watchers, but uh, the numbers should not bother you because your lot sizes should be able to take losing days at all times. Uh, Ram, not on every pair, 600 in total. Okay? So, all in all, if, if a trade that goes sour today and tomorrow bothers you, means your lot sizes are too big. Okay? Um, in the month of uh, March, we've uh, taken approximately 20% gain in our accounts. It's a very small amount of gain uh, on our accounts, but if you actually look at it, the 20% gain, if you look at it in pips, people can become rich off of that. 
but we're not aiming for the dollar amount. We're aiming for the pips. Okay, and some pips. You should not be trading really heavy on the pips. Goal is collect pips. Money will follow. Okay, questions. Um, totally got to go. Thanks for the webinar. Okay, thanks for attending, Totally. Ram, uh, your take on Euro Yen, please. Okay, let's take a look at Euro Yen. Okay, we're having a trend continuation pattern, but this will only be valid once it crosses to the other side. It's too soon to do an analysis. It's 8.20 now, which means 40 minutes to candle close. So I'm going to have to go ahead and cut the webinar short now. I'm so sorry, but we've gone way, way, way past our webinar time again. Um, but thanks for... Uh, thanks for everyone holding on uh, on the disconnects that we've had and coming back. And um, I hope to see all of you guys in, as members as on Urban Forex, which is on uh, uh, urbanforex.ning.com. And also, uh, if you guys have any questions, drop us a message. Please do send uh, good words for our, our member Roy, who has really worked hard to uh, create the exhaustion candle alerts and also uh, the EA to automatically trade, uh, to automatically open all your trades and close for you at, at a single touch rather than doing it one by one. And also for his contribution to help with Mac users. Okay, it was nice meeting all of you guys. Have a very good night and it's a pleasure as always.